So in this video, we're going to talk about the basics of uh, the modern atomic theory. Now, we already discussed the atom. So by now, you already know where protons, neutrons, and electrons exist. So now let's get into the actual nitty-gritty of this stuff. This is going to be a nice short podcast. I'm just going to break down the two main theories, and then we're going to move on to other stuff in class. So here's what I want you to do. First thing is, on your page, write modern atomic theory, and then directly underneath of it, I want you to draw this little line around down the page. And you don't want to take up the whole page, but maybe like half a page would be perfect for this. Okay, so now that you've got your line, on the left-hand side of your line, I want you to write the Bohr model. And this model comes from a guy named Niels Bohr. Now on the right-hand side, I want you to talk about the quantum mechanical model. And this was developed by a guy named Robert Quantum. No, I'm just kidding, not Quantum. This is actually a guy named um, Schrodinger, Heisenberg, and um, a small, lesser-known scientist. What was his name again? Oh, yeah, Einstein. So anyway, so let's talk about the Bohr model first. So in the Bohr model, it's what you typically think of as in the model of the atom. Okay, so I want you to make this little sketch down here on the bottom of your, of your section. Now, in the Bohr model, like we know of, the protons and neutrons are in the nucleus, and those electrons orbit the nucleus on set paths. And kind of what I always imagine is like runners on a track. Basically, those electrons are just going around and around and around and around until they, they stop. That's it. Okay. Now, the thing about the Bohr model of the atom is it can't account for multiple electrons. Now, I want you to picture for yourself runners running around a track. If you put one runner on the track, no issues. But when you put eight, you start to get cramped. If you put 10 it's worse. 16, 50, 118, all of those runners start to pack up and they start to push on each other. And because of the repulsions on the electrons, because everything is negative, this model doesn't work. It's got to expand and they can't do that here. Okay, so now let's think about the quantum mechanical model. In the quantum mechanical model, you still kind of have that same basic model, but you'll notice there's something real different. Notice all these dots all those little dots are where the electrons could be. Now, they generally take a shape, but sometimes they're in, sometimes they're out. Sometimes they're left, sometimes they're right. They're all over the place. So you still have your protons and neutrons in the nucleus. But now, instead of on those nice, neat orbits, the electrons exist in what are called clouds around the nucleus. Now, the clouds can look like what I've got here, or they can be kinds of all kinds of funky. Now, this, this one here on the top happens to be one of my favorite clouds because it's what's called the donut shape okay so it's a what's called a d orbital beyond what you need to know so you don't need to know these shapes just understand that the electrons take on a lot of different formations and again it all comes back to that idea of electrons repel so how can we identify what type of shape it is because there's lots of different shapes well einstein and at all came up with a system and those system that they called is called the quantum numbers now the quantum numbers is outside the scope of this course but understand that if you pursue this later you will be talking about the exact numbering system that they will use um, and the beauty of this model is because it allows for the electrons to move around it can actually account for any number of different electrons so these are the two main theories that we're going to go into there's a lot of other ones that you can read about in your textbook um, but for the purposes of what we're going to do in this class these are the only two that you really know.